John Stowe claims to be the Bishop of Lexington, Kentucky. Stowe is very outspoken in support of sodomy and, quote, transgenderism. Dear members of the LGBT ministry and supporters in the Diocese of Lexington, I'm happy to greet you during this Pride Month and happy to say a word of gratitude to you for the way that you strive to integrate your faith and your identities as people of God, as children of God. I'm sorry that the church has not been as welcoming as it should be in many cases. I'm sorry that the issue of sexual orientation has become so divisive in our church and our community. Sister Clara and so many members of the LGBT community and their supporters have put their rainbow flag outside of the church and the rainbow banner welcoming all people and have achieved some spotlight both locally and nationally for their message of inclusion. Has gone to gay pride events in the city. You're part of that body of Christ. I'm sorry that you have been always been made to feel that way. We do value you. I'm glad that you're taking your faith seriously and striving to grow in it. I hope to continue to learn from you and continue to make our church more welcoming, more, ex more inclusive, and more justice-oriented. I especially greet to the LGBT community of African Americans and other minorities. As painful as it is, I'm glad that the time has come that we're beginning to confront, and really it is just a beginning, our white privilege. Greetings of peace and all good to our brothers and sisters in the LGBT Catholic community who would have been participating in Outreach 2020. I'm Bishop John Stowe of the Diocese of Lexington. In the Diocese of Lexington, one component of our peace and justice ministry is an outreach to the LGBT community. Stowe gave the keynote address at the 2022 Outreach Conference. Outreach is an organization that openly states that they are a, quote, Catholic LGBTQ media organization. Before Stowe's speech, sodomy promoter, quote, Father James Martin offered the following words, end quote, prayer. Because this conference is at heart about God's love for LGBTQ people. Baptized by one spirit, we are members of one body. Many and varied in culture, sexuality, age, class, and ability, we are members of Christ's beautiful body. I've been invited to address this outreach gathering as a bishop, as one who holds teaching authority in the church, and as a member of a body that has not always been very friendly towards the LGBTQ community. I believe that my first words to you in the LGBT community in the church should be the same. I love you. I've been privileged to hear the stories and be part of the struggles of many LGBTQ persons during my years as a friar, priest, and bishop. I've heard about so much pain, rejection, self-doubt, self-hate, attempted suicide, anger, hurt, and deep sorrow from people who know that they did not choose their identity but are certain that it is an essential part of who they are. That identity is both gay and Catholic. And it is true that many in the course of their journey have attempted to change one or the other or both. But when accompanied by loving, supportive, and faithful people, I'm glad that many have come to see that they cannot and should not. More recently, I've become aware of people struggling with gender dysphoria. And I'm appalled by how many people in the church are simply dismissive of this lived experience and deny that it's possible or deny that it's real. I'm sorry that we don't often have the humility to admit what we don't know or to express a willingness to learn. Now, I don't relate any of this to suggest that the LGBTQ community should be identified with sinners or are any more or less in need of conversion than anyone else. But even if one held that erroneous view, there would be all the more reason for outreach and pastoral attention. It was a great sign of hope, unfortunately not a lasting one, when at the Synod on the Family, 
a paragraph in the working document suggested that some same-sex relationships share some of the virtuous characteristics of married love. Similar sentiments were expressed about those living in non-sacramental or irregular heterosexual marriages, which Pope Francis said should no longer be referred to as living in sin. Unfortunately, the paragraph about same-sex relationships did not make the final cut. Right after Stowe's speech, James Martin offered the following quote prayers. We believe that you have made us who we are in your image, a beautiful community of various races and cultures and sexual identities. You declared us good. We celebrate this diversity for we believe in your creative power who are cast out because of their sexuality or any other reason. We ache with them, for we believe that you love without exception. On July 20, 2022, Antipope Francis sent a letter to Outreach's official spokesperson, quote, Father James Martin. Here is a portion of Francis's letter congratulating the conference for promoting sodomy and the demonic filth you just saw clips of. Quote, thank you for the letter you sent me a few weeks ago along with the Outreach 2022 brochure. Congratulations for having been able to make the event happen this year in person. I assure you of my prayers. Don't stop praying for me. May Jesus bless you and the Blessed Virgin care for you. Fraternally Francis. Quote, Cardinal Dolan of New York City has also praised Outreach. He described it as, quote, an important ministry. Quote, Father James Martin of Outreach is well known for aggressively promoting sodomy, gay quote marriage, and quote transgenderism. Can Catholics celebrate Pride Month when the LGBTQ community marks its place in society? It's especially important for churches to celebrate Pride and participating in Pride events or at least supporting our LGBTQ friends is one way to do this. Maybe the best way to think about Pride is to imagine what you'd say to a young person who finally summoned up the courage to tell you that they were LGBTQ. You know that God created them. You know that God loves them. And you know that God wants them to accept who they are. So you would probably say, I am so proud of you for being able to say that. That's the kind of pride that we celebrate this month. So happy pride. Martin also says that pro-abortion politicians should be able to receive, quote, communion. You know, for a teaching to be really um, authoritative, it, it, it is expected that it will be received by the people of God, by the faithful. From what I can tell um, in the LGBT community, the teaching that um, LGBT people must be celibate their entire lives, not just you know before marriage as it is for most people, but their entire lives, has not been received. But that's a simple fact. You can say that they don't agree with it. I would say the teaching therefore has not been received by the community to which it was largely directed. Why is it so terrible to go to a gay wedding? But it is not terrible to go to a Jewish wedding. You know, most uh, LGBT weddings, gay weddings we can say, are civil weddings because that's just the way it is. And so you're going to a civil affair. How is that, why is that any worse in a sense to go to a Jewish wedding? I, don't, I really, I have a very hard time with that. So I think that's beautiful, it's a great story. And that they can celebrate with you, your love is beautiful. I mean, I would say, not so much what would Jesus do, but what are your parents doing? And how could God not rejoice in that kind of reconciliation and bridge building? How could God not love that? You know, whatever you think about gay weddings, how could Jesus not take joy in something? like you just told me. In 2018, the Vatican invited Martin to give a keynote speech at the, quote, World Meeting of Families. Many, if not most, LGBT Catholics have been deeply wounded by our church. If the church listened to LGBT people, I think 90% of the homophobia and prejudice in our church would disappear. By excluding LGBT Catholics, you are breaking up God's family. You are tearing apart the body of Christ. Thank you very much. (laughs) 
Martin said that his talk was approved by the Vatican before he gave it. In 2017, Martin was appointed by Francis to be an official advisor to the Vatican's, quote, Department for Communications. Francis has officially approved Martin's, quote, LGBT ministry and held a private audience with him. A friend of mine said, where he's meeting you in the Apostolic Palace in the library is where he meets diplomats and heads of state. And this is the public way uh, that the Vatican has of sending a signal of support for you. On May 5th, 2022, outreach spokesman Martin asked Francis to answer some questions. He asked Francis, quote, what do you say to an LGBT Catholic who has experienced rejection from the church? Francis said, quote, I would have them recognize it not as the rejection of the church, but instead of people in the church. Francis teaches that those who believe sodomy or, quote, transgenderism is not against Catholic teaching are inside the church. This is heresy. Mi chiamo Isabella Lisboa, sono in stade ieri nella funzione no? di Papa che è venuto a lavarci dei piedi no? e per me è stata un'emozione grandissima. Io sono 14 anni che sono in Italia, 14, no? sono un transessuale. Francis has also written letters praising another, quote, Catholic pro-LGBT group called New Ways Ministry. This group openly promotes gay, quote, marriage. Francis's words and actions show that he approves sodomy, gay, quote, marriage, and, quote, transgenderism. In June, Francis hosted a private audience at the Vatican with so-called transgender biological males. The move was reminiscent of Easter 2021, when the pontiff invited a group of transgenders to the Vatican for COVID jabs. Reporter Doug Mainwaring reported last week on Pope Francis's praise for Argentinian sister Monica Astorga Cremona, known locally in Argentina as the nun of the trans. Pope Francis's praise came in light of the nun opening a new complex of 12 small apartments dedicated solely to housing men claiming to be women and their sexual partners. In his communication with Sister Cremona, the Pope referred to her transgender clients as quote-unquote girls. Dear Monica, God who did not go to the seminary or study theology will repay you abundantly, said the Pope. I pray for you and your girls, end quote. Francis also arranged a meeting with a same-sex quote couple telling the homosexual quote, I would like to give you a hug when I go to DC. The apostate Francis did hug the homosexuals when he met with them. The homosexual who is a good friend of Francis confirmed that Francis quote, has long known that he is gay, but has never condemned his sexuality or same-sex relationship. In April of 2018, Francis told a man that being a homosexual is, quote, not a problem. Uh, when they talked about him being gay, the Pope told him it doesn't matter. God loves you like this. God made you like this. Gay people, friends of mine and gay people that I don't even know have been writing to me and said, did he really say that to you? And I said, yes. He said, well, that is changing my life. And he said, Juan Carlos, God made you like this. God loves you like this, the Pope loves you like this, and you should love yourself. During his press conference on October 2nd, 2016, Francis said that he has, quote, accompanied many people with homosexual tendencies and also homosexual activity. Jesus certainly does not say, quote, go away because you are a homosexual. Francis then said that he knows a, quote, transgender who had a, quote, sex change operation and had gotten, quote, married. Francis revealed that the, quote, transgender told him, quote, that it would bring comfort to him to come see me with his bride, he who had been she but is he. Francis then said, quote, I received them. They were pleased. Has Pope Francis taken another step to push for tolerance in the Catholic Church? Yes, says Diego Neria, a transgender man who says he had a private audience with the Pope in late January. Seeking answers, he wrote to the Pope last year and says his local bishop helped get the letter noticed. Next, according to Neria, came two phone calls from Pope Francis and a discreet audience on a Saturday evening at the papal residence, Casa St. Marta. Going back to John Stowe, Stowe is the, quote, bishop president for the, quote, Catholic organization called Pax Christi. 
On August 7, 2022, Stowe gave a speech at the Pax Christi Conference, complaining that, quote, LGBT couples aren't officially blessed by the church. In our time and place, we don't have to wander far to encounter the wolves. When Catholics are promoting the death penalty and awarded for doing so, when we're eager for vengeance and retaliation, when we're willing to bless armaments but not some couples, when the voices of women are not being heard, when the voices of women are not being heard in the fights about abortion, and when the institution when the institution cannot bring itself to say black lives matter. And of course, when so many self-proclaimed uber Catholics insist that they know more and know better than the Pope, we don't have to go far to encounter the wolves. Immediately after Stowe's speech, the following quote prayers were said. May we recognize our colonialists' roots, repent of our racist structures, and rebuke the ever-present threat of white nationalism so that liberty and justice may truly be for all. We pray to God. We pray for all who identify as LGBTQ+. We cannot ignore that the official documents of the church marginalize the LGBTQ plus community even more than lepers in Jesus' time. May we all work together to excise this theological cancer so that we may fully share your gifts and your beauty in our LGBTQ plus siblings with joy and pride. We pray to God. On May 5th, 2022, Stowe wrote an article for Outreach in which he said, quote, I have so many readily available stories of LGBT persons of great faith who are indeed in love with God and experience the welcoming embrace of Jesus who has entered their lives. Other bishops who attempt to apply gospel values to pastoral ministry with LGBT members of the church have found much to affirm in committed same-sex relationships. In June 2021, Stowe was involved in a special, quote, blessing service for, quote, Pride Month, which was hosted by another, quote, Catholic pro-LGBTQ organization called Dignity USA. Before the event, Dignity USA circulated a, quote, Pride Blessing Statement, which blesses self-identified LGBT and queer people as, quote, a unique and glorious reflection of God's astounding creativity and love. During this event, Stowe said, Dear friends in the LGBTQ community, I offer a prayer of blessing for each of you during this annual celebration of pride. Quote, Father Bernard Lynch, another speaker at the conference, also gave a, quote, blessing for couples and said, Bless them, Lord, in their covenants of love. As LGBTQI couples, they are true prophets of Jesus Christ and his gospel. In January 2019, Stowe led a, quote, LGBTQ retreat at the University of Notre Dame. During, quote, Pride Month in 2019, Stowe issued a, quote, prayer card, which celebrates homosexual, quote, pride and includes an image of a crucifix with rainbow colors coming from it. In 2020, Stowe also asked the churches in his, quote, diocese to place an ad for, quote, Catholic LGBT ministry in parish bulletins. The official ad sent out by the, quote, diocese says, quote, Every LGBT person is called to ministry in the church. What gifts do you have to share? Do you know someone who is a member of the LGBT community? Invite them to join our ministry and tell them we need the gifts they have to share. Here is an example of a church in Stowe's Lexington, quote, diocese, which promotes sodomy and, quote, transgenderism, and held a, quote, service of atonement and apology to the LGBTQ plus community. 
June is Pride Month. It's a time to celebrate and show support for the people who make up the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, non-binary, and queer community. One Lexington Church is taking that a step further with a display defying tradition. Here at the historic St. Paul Catholic Church on West Short Street in downtown Lexington, the message is clear. The doors of the church are open. They are rainbow colored. Come out and come in that the doors of God's house, the doors of this particular church, are open to everyone. And this month, the doors are red, yellow, orange, blue, green, and purple. The beginning of Lent in the Diocese of Lexington this year is marked not only by ashes and the sign of the cross, but also a pledge to the LGBTQ community. This pledge, signed by nearly 50% of the diocese priests, with more signatures still rolling in, this pledge was signed by almost half of the, quote, priests in the diocese. The pledge states, quote, We make this statement to proclaim to our LGBT community that we, your pastors and priests, stand with you. We pledge to honor, defend, support, and celebrate your dignity in our words and actions because you are beloved members of the church and reflections of God who loves you more than we can ever begin to imagine and is on your side. Stowe is just like most liberals, who while they call for people to tolerate abominable sins, are intolerant of truth and conservatives. Stowe has attacked Trump and Kentucky high school students for wearing Make America Great Again hats. Stowe suggested that the boys were delivering a racist message simply by wearing the hats. This video clearly proves that, quote, Bishop John Stowe is not a Catholic. Stowe is an apostate. Along with anti-Pope Francis, he is a leader in the Vatican II sect, which is not the Catholic Church, but the Whore of Babylon, the prophesied end times counterchurch. 